Hey guys, this is GamerCat09, and welcome to my questions and answers video for hitting 5,000 subscribers. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I posted up a video, probably like in May sometime, I posted a Q&A video for all of my subs, both new and old, to post any kind of questions they wanted to ask about me in celebration of the upcoming 5,000 subscribers, and you're seeing this because I finally hit 5,000 subscribers. Um, so, with nothing further to do, I'm going to start from the bottom up on all of the questions that I have, which I have over 70 comments, it's ridiculous, and uh, I'm going to try to mention your name and pronounce it correctly, read what you said, and answer the questions appropriately, and at the end of the video, I'll probably like write down everybody's name who um, submitted a question, so here we go. Fire Raven 36. Hey Cat, I know you're busy as hell, but it would be an honor. Would you be my special guest for Miss Sao and other game two? Um, first of all, I don't even know what Miss Sao is. I really haven't been uh, watching too many people. I've been recording and working and everything. Um, but I'm gonna assume it's a game, obviously. Uh, I can't really make any promises, Raven, because I'm pretty busy. Like. You said, you know, I'm busy as hell, and uh, my times to record aren't really the appropriate times like everybody else. I can't record at any given time, every time, or every day, and yeah, so I don't know. I can't make any promises. Mafu234. Hey, Cat, for starters, a massive congrats on doing so amazingly well on subs. Why, thank you. My questions are, number one, what is your favorite Sheva outfit in RE5? Um, my favorite outfit ha ha happens to be the, uh, the tribal one where she's got, like, the bikini thing going on and the paint. I like the outfit, but I hate the bow and arrow. Number two, do you have the PlayStation Move? If so, what games do you have for it? Well, it's kind of funny because, um, John spontaneously bought the PlayStation Move last year, and I think he bought SOCOM 3 with it. And that was pretty much the only game we had with the PlayStation Move, and he hated it, and I think he traded it in. So, the only games that we have that we can use the PlayStation Move on right now happens to be Heavy Rain and Little Big Planet, I think. And we don't really play the PlayStation Move ever. We haven't really solely bought a game for it to use it, so it's pretty much been collecting dust. Number three, what are the scariest games you've played besides Calling and Fatal Frame? Ha! Huh, the scariest games. I would say Silent Hill is probably part of that. Um, there are some moments where it's creepy as fuck. And... Um, other games. Even, like, some, like... Flash games and stuff. Like, uh... There was a Flash game series called Ex Mortis. And I think they got up to part three, and part three actually became a real game on the computer. And I thought that was pretty fucking scary. Um, but I never really played the full version of the third one. I played one and two, and two scared the crap out of me. <laughs> uh, you can ask all the subs who've been with me since the beginning. When I used to stream, I streamed Flash games for Halloween, and I would always get the shit scared out of me. <laughs> Yeah. And also, you're an awesome gamer, and I'm so glad to have you back. Thank you very much. It's great to be back. I am KBS99. Hey, Cat. My question is, what is your all-time favorite game series? Resident Evil. Hello. Obviously, I love Resident Evil. I grew up on that game, and I'm probably going to die playing that game. Not even kidding. Andrew Hill. What is your favorite book and TV series? Welcome back. Um... My favorite book? I'm gonna go with the most recent one that I read, so I don't sound like I'm terribly old and ancient, but <laughs> the recent book that I read that I really liked happened to be The Time Traveler's Wife. I believe it's by Audrey Niffenegger or something. Um, the movie sucked. It doesn't even do the book justice. The, uh, the book had so much more detail, it was just such a pleasure to read, and I obviously had to read it um, for school, so when I watched the movie I was just like, ugh, 
like it was disgusting. And my favorite TV series, well, there happens to be a couple of those. Um, we like watching uh, Arrested Development, Breaking Bad, Dexter. We watched all of 24. 24 is going to be coming back. Uh, and the one TV series that I got John hooked into re-watching, because he never really got to see it when he was younger, happens to be The X-Files. So we're watching that right now. So, I mean, I got a couple really cool TV series we like watching. It's quite an enjoyable time after dinner. <laughs> and live bait. Hi, Cat. I was just wondering what made you decide to do mainly horror games on your channel. Well, live bait, um... I mainly did scary games because that was just something I really got hooked into playing ever since I was little. They both scared the shit out of me and fascinated me. And everyone on YouTube found it to be the most hilarious thing in the world to see my reaction to games and scream bloody murder and make everybody deaf. So that's why I focused mainly on horror games. Um, not only just that, but I feel like scary games have a better story and they're able to grasp you and put you at the edge of your seat and go, oh my god, what's gonna happen? Who's gonna die? What's gonna happen? Kind of thing. And, it's pretty interesting to watch a plot unfold when it comes to horror games, and that's something that they do very well compared to action games and puzzle games and whatever. Not saying they're terrible. A lot of them are pretty good, but it started out with horror games with me, and it just stays with me. Whatever Abridged asks, which game did you like Let's Playing the most? Honestly, I would have to go back to my roots and say... I liked playing Clock Tower 3 and Beyond Good and Evil. I do like playing games blind, but not as good as playing games that I've played through before and that I record solely to show you guys how much I love them. Um, like right now I'm working on Resident Evil 2 for you guys, and I want to show you guys what captured me in Resident Evil 2 and show you how to get all of the different things and the different clues and read all the stories and give you some insight to what's going on in the game, you know, while you're watching me play the game so you can go, oh, I get it now, kind of thing. It's such a nostalgic moment for me to go back in time and play games that I've played hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. I mean, Heavy Rain too, same thing. Just games that I could always pick up, put down, and then come back and pick it up again. Those are the kind of games I love playing the most. You So Lame asks, what was your least favorite game to Let's Play? Well, honestly, and I know a lot of fans are probably going to hate it when I say this, but Resident Evil Outbreak. I mean, it got pretty cool in the beginning and it was only my second Let's Play I ever did and then towards the end, it just turned out to be a disaster and I hated myself for even... Like, it was one of those moments where I got started and I'm like, oh, this is gonna be cool, I can do this and I never completed the game before from getting to end. And then once I got towards the end and I realized how difficult it was, I was like, oh my god, why the hell did I start this? I shouldn't have even bothered. I should have did something I was familiar with. And I just kept recording over and over and over again. And in case you guys don't know or if you never heard me explain it, the one thing that sucks about Resident Evil Outbreak since they put the servers down is not only do you play alone, obviously, but there's no way to save the game. Like, there's no halfway point for you to save the game. If you die, you can just pick back up where you left off. Imagine playing, like, an entire game, and then you die, and you have to start all the way from the beginning. And that kind of pissed me off, especially when it comes to recording. So, that was sadly my least favorite game to let's play. The Chelly Bean 85 asks, I have a question and a comment. My question is, what made you decide to become a Let's Player? Well, I mean, I don't really know. I mean, I do, but I don't. Like, way long ago, we're talking like 2008, 2000, 2007, 2008, I was in the middle of college and I was watching a lot of videos on YouTube because in my college time when I wasn't delved into books and work and art and you name it. I wanted to rewind and relax and there was really no other way I could do it because all my friends were in college and in school and working and 
you know, entering the adult life as a young student kind of thing. You're bored out of your mind. And so I started watching YouTube videos and I came across Let's Plays and I started watching different people's Let's Plays. And I was just kind of like, wow, you know, that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm going to school for game design and they're playing games and showing people how to do it. Maybe that'd be something I'd like to do. So I gave it a shot and I didn't expect to be where I am today. I just kind of went with it and it's been going good so far. And they say, and my comment is, I love that you were the only girl gamer I watch. You were the second YouTuber that I ever started watching. You are awesome. I hope you are doing better. Thank you very much. And yes, I am. I I'm glad that I am because I'm glad to be back. Blackwind041 asks, Hey Cat, whatever happened to haunting ground runs you said you were going to do? Hum, well, you know, I said that because I, I was like, you know, hey, you know, this game was pretty good. I'm going to go back through and do like the other runs and show people how to do it. And I think I started doing it and then I realized how difficult it was to get all the other endings. Every time I play a game that has multiple endings, I've learned in the past to just leave the game where I left it and to not go back hundreds and hundreds of times and try to get the other endings because it is such a pain in the ass and the level of difficulty is astounding sometimes. And some of the different runs that you had to do in Haunting Ground happened to be like where she screamed and panicked all the time and where she like beat Huey all the time. And I didn't want to go back through the game, re-record all of that and yeah. Plus, you can watch hundreds of videos on YouTube of every single playthrough and run, and I decided not to do it. Um, and also, I let my friend borrow the game, so she had it for like a couple years, because she borrowed it and she moved like three times, so tracking her down and my game down was a uh, long process, and then I finally got it back, and it's just like, eh, you know, I haven't played it in a couple of years, I don't really want to pick it up again. It's not that I don't like Haunting Ground, it's just I have so many other awesome games that I want to work on for you guys that I don't want to go back and replay a game that I did like four years ago. So that's why. I'm sorry if everyone's looking forward to that, but that's how it happened. Nexels uh, says, congrats for the 5k, thank you. Two whole different questions just for you. Number one, what is your favorite fairy tale? Well, honestly, I don't know. I don't even think I have a favorite fairy tale. Like, they all sound pretty fake to me. You know, how like, the princess always gets the prince and you know, everybody lives happily ever after and like, you know as well as I do, there is no happily ever after to a lot of things, and uh, I can't really say I have a favorite fairy tale. Um, I do like the fucked up versions of them, though, where like, they don't get what they want, and you know, people end up like screwing themselves over in it, but yeah. I don't really have an actual favorite fairy tale, I guess. And number two, what's the most terrifying, cruel, bloody death scene you've ever seen in a movie and or... Wait, in a movie and or movie. I think you meant game. Um... The most terrifying, cruel, bloody death scene. Uh... I would have to say... And this was just recent. Um... I was watching a friend of mine play Tomb Raider, the new game, and I saw, <laughs> I saw freaking the character get her head like impaled while she was like going down a waterfall or something. I was just like, oh my god, I was not expecting that kind of thing. It's not the most terrifying one, but that's the only one I can think of right now. I mean, other than that, I mean, the only things I can think of aren't really death scenes. Like, Ethan cutting off his finger isn't a death scene. In movies, though, um, I would have to say, pr 
probably the Saw series in movies, because they're pretty gruesome, like, people getting their, you know, fucking heads blown off and limbs cut off and tortured, and, yeah, I would, I would have to say, still to this day, I think movies are still the most gruesomest things you've ever seen. At least as far as my knowledge of video games, at least what I've physically seen and played, that's probably the most gruesome I've ever witnessed. Lonely Sith 66 asks, how many cats do you have? Well, this is a trick question. I technically have like two, technically. But as of this very moment, I don't have any. And I know that sounds confusing, but when I moved to live here with John, I, in the beginning, couldn't take my cats. And even right now, I still can't take them, even after everything that's happened. And the reason why that is I'm trying to get a better job so that I can support my babies, so to say. I don't want to bring them here and then have to give them away because I can't afford to buy them food or, you know, litter or, or take them to the vet. And I know they need to go to the vet. So, I mean, I technically have two. My two cats happen to be Zoe and Mickey. And... The rest of the cats happen to be just cats we took in. If I had it my way, I would take Zoe, Mickey, and Cookie. But it's a wait and see kind of thing. Real God 1002 says, "Good to see you again." Why, thank you. And so, if you could be a character from any horror game, who would you be and why? If I could be a character from any horror game, um. That, well, I don't think, it, I don't think Heavy Rain qualifies as a horror game. I mean, there are moments where it's kind of freaky, but I would like to be Norman Jaden because of the fucking uh, Ari and everything. That'd be pretty cool. But as for an actual scary game, I think the closest that I'd ever want to be is probably Claire Redfield, because... She was pretty badass in Resident Evil 2. Even from the beginning, she was pretty badass. And she was a zombie killer. She was a babysitter. She did everything all at once kind of thing. So I thought that was pretty cool. I don't want to be anybody else because 90% of all women in scary games die. So I'd rather be a character where I wouldn't get killed. I guess you could say. So, yeah, definitely her. Andrew York, do you ever plan on finishing Alan Wake or playing Killer7? Um, I think you have me confused with someone else because I never played Alan Wake, ever. That's not my Let's Play. And I don't even know what Killer7 is, but if it's a shooter, most likely not. Yuko Kira says, any thoughts on playing Metal Gear Rising or Bayonetta? Well, I watched John play Metal Gear Rising, and I thought it was a pretty cool game. Do I see myself playing it? Maybe, but I don't think I'd let's play it, because I haven't really played any Metal Gear game. Not like this one's like any Metal Gear game, but still. And uh, Bayonetta, I had started, and then I just kind of stopped. I don't even remember why I stopped. I liked the game, but I didn't. I think I was streaming it. I do have it. I may consider playing it in the future. I mean, I'm not making any promises because I know Bayonetta 2 is coming out. So it's a wait and see, I guess. We'll have to see how everything goes. Um, who care? 9999 just says Dead Island Riptide in exclamation marks. Um... I don't have Dead Island Riptide. <laughs> I only have Dead Island, and I haven't even finished that, so probably no Dead Island Riptide for a while. LP Lover 401 says, Hi Cat, would you ever consider playing Resident Evil Outbreak again? Well, if you heard what I previously said in the video, no. I'm sorry, but no. That game made me rage and hate everything, and I don't want to have to relive that. I'm just kind of moving on to things that I would like to do, projects I'd like to work on, and trying to avoid the whole starting a game and never finishing it thing. So, yeah. 
Enemy Teal6924 has a couple questions. Hey, Kat, I have a few questions. Number one, what is your job and what is your work routine like? Well, my job, I'm a cashier at a grocery store. My work routine involves coming into work and I could work anywhere from like 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And I come into work and I, I mean, I work in multiple different departments, but I'm mainly a cashier. I mainly just run the register, bag your groceries, you know, give your total, count your money kind of thing. Um, when I work in the cafe, I still operate register, but I also clean tables, change garbages, um, take the garbage back to the compactor, uh, sell beer, follow the Pennsylvania beer and liquor rules and all that fun stuff because I, I literally have the kind of job that if I fuck up on and don't do my job properly, I will get fired and probably fined from the state and the store. So, I mean, it's a lot of responsibility, but I've been doing it for so long. I've, I've been there for almost seven years. It's just the same thing day in, day out. And it's not horrible. It's just monotonous and tedious. And I would just much rather have a job as a graphic designer than as a cashier, if you know what I mean. Uh, number two, what are some of your hobbies besides playing video games? Well, I'm kind of glad you asked that. Um, I'm a freelance artist and designer on the side. I actually do perler bead projects. I make little magnets and boxes and and portraits and everything like that. Um, I also sketch and paint and sell those. Um, and I also do graphics. Um, I'm a freelance hired graphic designer by one of my friends who owns a business called Jalantalus Creations. And if you don't believe me, you can actually Google it. Um, but she makes like jewelry and portraits and paintings and all the different kinds of stuff. And she's got like an Etsy shop and all that stuff, her own website. And I make the graphics for her stuff, which is pretty cool. So I'm trying to get some kind of experience and it's very hard to do in this economy and line of work, but uh, that's kind of what I do on the side. Aside from playing video games, I'm a pretty busy woman. <laughs> Number three, what genre of video games do you not like? I hate 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 war games hate them like call of duty kind of games i can't stand them i don't mind watching people play them but for me to physically sit down and play call of duty i am the worst person in the world to give a gun and save the earth kind of game uh, like i remember the last time i ever played any kind of call of duty game and it was one of the older call of duty games like i want to say it was on playstation 2 and it was at my brother's house and i couldn't figure out how to operate anything in the game and instead i accidentally threw a grenade into the ditch i was standing in and blew myself up i can't stand those games i am not a person that has quick reflexes as far as those first person shooters go so I, I just I can't stand it. It's like oh we gotta kill Nazis oh that's only every other fucking war game in the world or you have to fight the British or you have to fight fucking Japanese or somebody it's always some kind of war game and I just don't like them like John plays them I don't. I'll watch him, and then I'll troll him if he dies in them because he rages, but I don't play them. And number four, what do you hate in video games, and what do you like seeing in them? What I hate the most, and I think a lot of girls can agree with me, I hate the whole character envision when it comes to women in horror games where women are weak and fragile and like basically damsel in distress is the best way I can describe it and I hate how women are portrayed as you know oh god they're gonna come kill me save me kind of thing and I hate that it's like you know we need a lot more games that involve women that kick ass more than like, oh god, I'm gonna die. Like, you know what? Then you deserve to. And uh, what I do like seeing in games is 
character to character interaction in video games, like kind of what The Walking Dead did, where just the way the story was written and the way that the game had to be played, it made you love the characters. It made you get attached to Lee Everett. It made you get attached to Clementine. And it made you want to save those people. And in the end, when everything played out the way it did, you just couldn't help but cry. That emotional attachment to characters in games is what I hope to see in the future. Um, I know I am stoked for the game Beyond Two Souls, and I have a feeling it's going to do a lot of that, so I'm pretty excited for when that game comes out, because I'm probably going to be, like, hardcore on that thing, so, yeah, that's, um, that's what I like. Um, Silver Komiko asks, what are your next Let's Plays you're looking forward to in the future? Well, I'm not going to mention all of them because a lot of them are going to be surprises, so don't expect me to reveal everything. I do plan on doing Bioshock 2 once Bioshock 1 is finished, and I do plan on doing the Uncharted series. Um, there's also a couple of surprises coming up that I don't want to mention because I want you guys to be like, oh, she's playing it in the future. So I do plan on finishing everything I'm working on right now and the ones that I've mentioned plus a couple extra. So definitely stay tuned to see what will come up in the future. Daniel Kiryu. Yay, I can finally see Cat's face. Yes, you can. Which are your favorite characters in the horror games you've already played so far? And one character you love the most. Um, I love, um, oh god, I even forget his name. The guy in Calling, the hot guy, I forget his name already. I loved him, because I thought he was cute and sexy. Uh, I love Resident Evil 2. I like Claire Redfield a lot. She's pretty fucking cool. Ana Wong's even a badass in that game. Um, Leon's just, he's funny. Like, it, it, you watch him like, How dare you? You're so selfish running off like that! You know, kind of thing. It's it's funny. Um, I do like Heather in Silent Hill 3. I like her attitude. She's like this rebellious, you know, I don't give a fuck about anything teenager kind of approach. And that's pretty cool. Um, other than that, nothing is striking me at the very moment. Um, but I don't think I can pick one. Like, I can't pick one. I'm a very indecisive person. You can't make me pick one. I like the ball. Like, I think every single horror game I played equally has someone that I love, even if it's not a main character. But, uh, th that's all I can think of. Rareware0192. Yay! Question. What other blind Let's Plays are you planning on recording, and will you be doing a Resident Evil 4, possibly? Well, I answered the whole blind Let's Plays thing. Um, this kind of goes in connection with the other question about what games do you plan on playing in the future. Um, they are going to be blind in the future, a lot of them will be, but I don't want to mention them. Uh, and will I be doing Resident Evil 4? Uh, you know, I don't really know. I originally did it as a stream thing, and I was streaming it, and I think I got towards, like, the end, or a little bit more than halfway through, and I kind of stopped, because I couldn't stream anymore. Um, but I don't know if I'll be doing it. A, a part of me wants to do it, but then I know when I get so far, I don't want to do it anymore, because I had such a hard problem with that game. And I hate Ashley Graham so much. So I guess it's a wait and see. We'll have to see what happens. David Rocks Jr. Um, ooh, 5K subs is a huge milestone. So I have a few questions, so while comment go, lol. <laughs> uh, number one, do you have any interesting hobbies or quirks? I mentioned that in someone else's question. Number two, do you have any video game character you can relate to on a personal level. Um. Huh. Any video game character you can relate to on a personal level? Um. I don't really know. That's a really good question. 
<laughs> now you've got me thinking. Um, that's kind of crazy. Uh, I really don't know. Like, I think in a way I can relate to Lee only because I can control his emotions and like his decisions and stuff. But I agree with everything that Lee did because I made him do it, obviously. But I think I can relate to him on a personal level because. If I was in his shoes, the decisions wouldn't be easy, but ultimately I would do everything in my power to save Clementine. Everything, even if it was sacrificing myself. So, yeah, I could probably relate to that whole zombie apocalypse scenario with Lee Everett and poor Clementine, you know? Like, that's the only thing I could come up with. Uh, three, is there any game that has just grabbed you and you cannot put it down, if so which? Um... At the very moment, no. The last game that I picked up and I didn't want to put down was Resident Evil 6, and the time before that was Heavy Rain. Um, well, correction. Resident Evil 6, Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City, then Heavy Rain. Um, but Heavy Rain was the first game I ever played, and I played 10 hours straight and I didn't put the game down. Like, the only time I stopped playing it was to eat and to go to the bathroom, and then I'd be back playing it. <laughs> Um, and finally, what is your favorite character in any game you've played? Um, like I said, Claire. I do love her. I mean, uh, it's so hard to pick a favorite character. But, uh, I do, I, I mean, I, I love, not as, not as a, a game character that I actually controlled, but I do love Clementine. She is so adorable, and I love how they made her, like, the perfect little girl video game character that anyone could ever love. It's just love at first sight with that little kid. Um, what's Apple if? It's great to have you back, my question. What about your job? Did you get out of the stupid grocery store? Do you still work there? Well, like I mentioned in another person's, um, question, yeah, I'm still there, unfortunately. I'm trying my best to apply to jobs and get out, but, yeah. I'm, uh, I am still there. Um, Yuko Kira, I think you asked a question before, and here's another one. Any chance on doing Bayonetta or Metal Gear Rising? Um, I think I did answer this before. Um, yeah, I did. Um, and here's an actual question. What is your favorite Let's Player besides you that you watch? Um, honestly, I got hooked to watching uh, Chaotic Monkey cry. And uh, I love his personality and I love the games he's played. He just recently started playing The Last of Us and I'm trying to avoid not watching it because at some point in time I do want to get the game and I don't want to spoil anything on me. But I just, I started watching him ever since White Day. And I just love watching him. He's so funny. Uh, Lewis, I guess it's supposed to be 5 or V, I'm not sure. So glad you're back. Are you going to upload Jake and Ada's campaign of RE6? And are you going to do a Let's Play of Uncharted Saga soon? Um, yes, I am going to finish um, uploading the rest of Resident Evil 6 eventually. I'm currently having a problem with Ada's campaign. So I actually asked a friend of mine if he could help me play. So I'm going to be wrapping that up eventually within the next month or so, whenever we have time. Um, and I'm hoping to get that done because that's really all I have to finish before I can do mercenaries and all that fun stuff. And I am planning on doing the Uncharted Saga soon, as soon as I finish up everything else that I'm working on. I already finished up Silent Hill 3, so that's completely done. It just needs to be finished uploading. Um, but I still have to work on Bioshock, and Dino Crisis, and Resident Evil 2, and Resident Evil 6. So I, I hope to finish everything before I move on to other projects so I don't get caught up in them. Callie Girl, 1225 on a scale of 1 to awesome, how are you feeling today? Nah, nah, I'm not feeling fairly, fairly pretty fucking good. I would say I'm kind of tired, but uh, I'm good. I'm, I'm getting stuff done, so I mean, that's always a good thing. The Black Foxy. Well, my question is, are you going to go back and finish any, all of the LP that isn't finished, aside from... Uh, Red Dead Redemption and Resident Evil Outbreak, yes. 
Yes, I do plan on finishing all of them. Uh, Shimmy, Shimian, Shimon, Shimon, whatever your name is. Um, question number one: Would you ever do a let's play with me? <laughs> it's so like, it. I, I, honest to God, I find it flattering that everybody wants me to play games with them. I really do. However, there's a lot of hard work and time that goes into playing games with people that I think people are aware. Now, maybe you've played games with numerous amount of people and recorded them, or maybe you just played games with people, but to actually sit in a room for several hours, being left alone at a time of day and at the same time zone availability that someone else is available to sit and record for several hours is not an easy thing to do. Really is not. Uh, and and that's the only struggle. Like when I was in college, and um, Nemo, Kitty, and Amber would play with me a lot. Um, I mean, that was because I was in college. I lived with my parents. You know, like I didn't work as much as I do now, and I don't have a lot more responsibilities than I do now. You know, so it's kind of difficult because as we grow, we change. And times change and as much as I'd like to sit in front of the TV for like 10 hours and play video games it just doesn't happen anymore so I mean sadly I don't think it's gonna happen I don't think I'm gonna have a lot of co-op let's plays in the future I think it's gonna be like pretty much me being solo or like a surprise one every now and then if it's a short game it's just it's a wait and see and question number two, after the recent situations with your boyfriend's mom, have you embraced or learned anything? As in, do you love life more or have you always done it? And how have you taken yourself through this? Well, it was, in general, a very difficult process. And it was something that I was both experienced in and yet very unexperienced in. I'm used to taking care of sick people all my life. I mean, I grew up with a sister who had medical problems and she was born. And even my own mother has had a stroke in the last three years. And even my dad is not in that good health. So on top of that, and then people close to me in the family, um, my aunt had dementia. My uncle died of stage four lung cancer. Like, I've had a lot of experience, but... I never, I mean, this was, this was the thing that caught me so off guard was when John and I first started dating was when all this had just started happening to his mom. So I kind of got into this whole thing when we started dating like two and a half years ago. And he even discussed this with me in the beginning that, you know, the surgery to remove the tumor was successful, but it left her with permanent brain damage. And the doctors even said right then and there after the surgery that there's no guarantee how long it, you know, will stay as it is and not grow. And they don't know her life, her life expectancy after that point. And this came from a situation that when she was first diagnosed, she literally had six months or less to live. And the fact that she lived like two and a half, almost two and a half more years than she should have is pretty astounding. But the one thing that I have learned more than anything else is time is precious and don't waste it. You know, it's something easier said than done because sometimes we have time to ourselves and we do waste it. It's just something we do, not because we want to, but it just happens. And time just, you don't have time anymore. And if you think about it, like, what if you were diagnosed with cancer tomorrow? What would you do with your time? Would you, you know, spend it next to the ones you love? Would you want to spend it by yourself? Would you want to travel the world? What would you want to do? And it's kind of one of those scenarios. It's like, I want to do everything that I possibly humanly can a day so that I can go to bed every night and be like, I accomplished something. Even if I just did the laundry, I accomplished something. I didn't just waste my whole day doing nothing. And uh, I, I think that's just the one thing. Like, we don't have a lot of time. I mean, 
whether or not you ever do have cancer in your life or some kind of illness or if you get hit by a bus tomorrow and die like time is precious we just don't have all the time in the world like we want to ah uh, but yeah and they even said I know the last question is weird but when someone in your life dies it changes someone and it really has changed I mean John and I have both changed and I think our relationship has bonded even more so on a level that I don't think any other couple could ever feel unless they dealt with something so severe as this because we went through it together and I promised him when we first started dating I said I can't promise that everything will be okay and you know your mom will be all right but I can promise I'll be with you to the you know through everything to the end and I'm still doing that so you know value your time and use it wisely and you know realize the good side of life I guess Bayonetta X fan number one what is the strangest thing you have ever done in public um that's a really random question I don't know if I've ever done something strange in public I would have to say like I don't know if it's strange but I would say it's like awkward like you ever go to a party whether it's like at a club or at a bar or at someone's wedding or something and everyone expects you to dance kind of thing well that's kind of what happened to me on John's side of the family um back when I attended his brother's wedding and like the aunt was just like you know hey Katrina why don't you get up and show us how to do this move and I'm just like awkwardly like uh, um um I I don't dance <laughs> like just because I can do the electric slide does not mean I want to show all you guys how to do it that's pretty much the most strangest thing I've ever done in public and it's quite embarrassing and I don't like it <laughs> Number two, do you like Harry Potter? And if so, what is your favorite book or movie? Um, I do like Harry Potter. I have not read the books. Mainly because I saw the movies before I even knew about the books. And I didn't want to read the book and then watch the movie and then be one of those people that's like, Brr, they missed this part and this and that. Because books and movies are never the same unless you count Fahrenheit 451. And, uh, so the movie, my favorite movie, happens to be, like, part one and part two of the last movie. I thought that was pretty, it was pretty, like, dark and serious and depressing and yet exciting at the same time because it truly showed everybody for who they really were. I mean, even Neville fucking kicked ass. Neville! Like, that's what I like in a movie. Not this whole, like, oh, you must be Harry Potter. Like, in the earlier movies, you're just like, oh, God, this is so cliche. <laughs> Um, number three, how many times have you sneezed in a row? <laughs> you said ask anything and I did. Well, that's kind of funny because I do have a lot of allergies. And uh, I think the most I've ever sneezed in a row happens to be like, uh, like six, seven, eight times, I would have to say. Yeah. Uh, also, what would you do for Klondike Bar? Um, I, uh, I would kill zombies. For Klondike Bar, maybe. All right, I'll, all right. I'll, I'll make it more epic. I will kill a zombie with my bare hands. I will just beat the shit out of it for a Klondike Bar. Only if it's the mint chocolate chip Klondike Bar. If it's a regular Klondike Bar, fuck that nonsense. Um, how many consoles? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Space Monkey Z88. How many consoles do you own, and which is your favorite one, and why? Uh, well, that's kind of funny because I personally only owned like one, two, three, four, like four or five. John owns them all. And I'm not even remotely kidding when I say he owns every single one. The on Actually, the only game console I don't think he has are the Segas. I don't think he has Sega. But he pretty much has them all. And this isn't like including emulators or anything. Like he literally has them all. He has a, like a legitimate Nintendo, a Super Nintendo, a Nintendo 64, an Atari. Like he has them all. The favorite one, I mean, it's a matter of opinion, but I still like the good old like the Super Nintendo. I like the regular Nintendo. 
Uh, I like the Sega and um, what other ones? I like the GameCube. That's just something I just recently started liking because I started playing Resident Evil 3 on the GameCube. So that's, that was pretty cool. And what is your favorite scary game? We went over this before in another question. Um, Marlu, Marlu Lagen, Langenberg. Cat, how do you record? I really want to be a YouTuber gamer too, but how do you record because I can't figure it out? And also, you're awesome. Everyone messages me this, and it's really not that hard, guys. You can even, like, search on YouTube how to record a video game. And there's so many different ways to do it. It's just all a matter of how much money are you willing to put into it and, you know, your connections. Because everybody's connections are different, especially if you say live in the UK versus the US your connections would have to be a little bit different as far as your channel TV and whatever um, for my PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 1 games I record using the uh, Dazzle DVC 100 which is a white device that plugs into your computer and hooks up through a component cable to your TV screen and it's not recorded in HD or anything fancy, it's just recorded. That's what you see all of my PlayStation 2 games, such as Fatal Frame 2, Silent Hill 3, that's how you see them all being played. Um, and my PlayStation 3 games are now being recorded on the HD PVR, which is um, like a HD recorder, it's called Avermedia Capture recorder and this this device is like over a hundred dollars maybe just a hundred dollars I got it for Christmas but it's a separate device that requires an external hard drive to be put inside of it so you spend money on the actual recorder and then you need to spend an additional money on getting a hard drive to put in it so that you can record everything to the hard drive um, and my hard drive is a, I think it's a 320 gigabyte hard drive, I believe. Um, and everything gets recorded to the little hard drive. And then when it's done, I put the little hard drive in an external enclosure case thing for the little hard drive. And then I plug it into my computer and then download everything to my computer. Uh, and all of my audio and commentary are recorded by Audacity. It's really not that difficult. I'm probably going to have to make an updated video explaining to everybody how it's done just so I can show you guys once and for all how everything is recorded. I tried making one a while back and uh, I don't really use that method anymore because that was back when I was using uh, Windows Media Player thing to... Well, uh, not Windows Media Player, Windows Movie Maker to edit everything. Yeah. Uh, Mu Aya 890 Cat, have you ever did an RE4 blind walkthrough? Yes, I have. It was on JTV when I was streaming. You could still go to my JTV channel. Um, I'll try to find a link for it if it still exists and you can watch. I don't know if you can watch all of it like you used to. The quality is terrible, I'm warning you. But there are at least highlights from it. And I never um, actually finished the walkthrough because I stopped streaming. And why do each video game has the word blind in it? Is it so no one will give you any spo spoilers like cheats and answers? Um, no, the reason why it's blind... I feel like I've explained this a million times already. The reason why it's blind is because it's the first time I'm playing it. And it's just to let everybody know that I've never played this game before until now. So people aren't like, you know, why didn't you do that? You should have went through the story. You should have unlocked this key. You should have killed this monster like this. That's why it says blind. Because to let everybody know, it's my first time playing a game. Ice Shadow 123456. Hope you are feeling better, Cat. One, what game or games have made you want to flip a table over in anger? Um, the ending of Run Like Hell, for one. Uh, for two, the 
driving sequence in Heavy Rain to get that trophy called the Bear is fucking ridiculous, but I finally got it. Um, and the nemesis part of Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City is just, oh my god, it just made me rage so much. I hate it so much. And right now, the Ada scenario of Resident Evil 6 is making me want to flip over a table with anger because I'm just like, fuck, stop dying! Yeah. Two, are you a cat or a dog person? I mean, really, I'm both, but I prefer cats because cats are easier to take care of, I guess. And, like, cats, you can just leave food and water out, and they kind of just take care of themselves. Dogs are so annoying. They bark. They, you know, want to be taken outside to go to the bathroom at, like, 1 in the morning on a 10 below green day. So, I mean, they're cute. They're all cute. I love all animals, but I prefer cats. And three, have you ever heard of Yaoi? Yes, I have. I'm not particularly fond of them. The first time I ever found out what a Yaoi was, um, I was watching Death Note, and I realized that they were trying to make a thing go on between the two guys in Death Note. It was just kind of like, oh, well, I'm not interested in watching or reading this. Yeah. Jason Williams, okay question. Let everybody know where the shuffle song came from. Rorschach Shuffle actually came from a time where I was, it was like my first stream that I ever did on YouTube. And I was playing Watchmen. And Watchmen, if you ever played the game, is just like a pointless beat em up game. There's really no progression of the story or anything. It's just like, ooh, I beat somebody up, woo, kind of thing. So. In the beginning, I just love how Rorschach walks and how you can just make him walk back and forth like a zigzag. And that's how I got Rorschach Shuffle, Rorschach Shuffle. That's where it came from. So now every time I can make a character resemble that walk in a video game, I call it the Rorschach Shuffle. It came from Rorschach from Watchmen. Davy Gamer 97 Hi Kat, my question for you is how long does it take you to edit, render, and upload videos? Well, how long? It doesn't really take me long to edit. It takes me maybe like 10 or 15 minutes to edit a video depending on what it is and how many, you know, parts I have to like edit, delete, whatever. Editing isn't that bad. Rendering videos takes like anywhere from one hour to like three hours to render a single HD video. The better the quality, the longer it takes. So yeah. <laughs> and upload the videos. Uploading doesn't really take that long at all. It takes maybe like an hour to upload a video, an hour or less. So the rendering part is just a pain in the ass. And sometimes the editing part is if I have to cut a lot of pieces out because when I use um, video pad video editor sometimes it just likes to screw up and freeze and, and all that fun stuff. Um, Sucker Punch Productions, here is my question. Would you rather lose one arm or one leg? I would rather lose one egg. One, yeah, one egg. One leg because I like my arms and I use my arms a lot and if I just had to be succumbed to a wheelchair then whatever. I would lose a leg. Would you rather have no friends or a ton of fake friends? I'd rather have no friends. And have is the scariest game you have ever played. I think it's what is the scariest game you ever played. Um, the scariest game that I ever played to date still happens to be Calling. Calling was pretty fucking scary. I never saw that coming. And for a game that didn't even really get that much publicity... People really didn't know what that game was. And I still think that was a pretty cool game. If it had a lot more advertising than it did, it, I think it probably did the game talk. I think it would have been a pretty cool seller. That's just my personal opinion. Um, so, Avon Kiri. There's a lot of shit written here, so I'm just going to skip to the question because I'm probably recording this for like an hour. My only question is, I'm sort of an aspiring Let's Play, and I was wondering if you'd look at some of my vids and tell me what you think, what I could improve on, etc. Um, I can't promise you I'll get to it immediately, but I'll try to. It's, it's really difficult for me to just 
have time on my hands when I'm not doing anything, but I'll try to make a note of it. Also, what are some new games you plan on Let's Playing? I already went through this. Uh, RoboGlen387. Who do you think would win in a fight? Dante from Double May Cry or Inuyasha? Dante has guns. Inuyasha can turn into a fucking, like, demon. So, but I mean, Devil well, Dante's kind of a demon, too. Um, I would just like to say Inuyasha because I prefer Inuyasha better. <laughs> um, choking on sorrow. If you could eat shepherd's pie for the rest of your life, would you? Shepherd's pie, I believe, is from uh, that movie where they like kill people and make them into pies. And the name escapes me, but no, I don't think I would. I think I would rather just starve to death. That's kind of gross. Also, what is your opinion on achieving voting rights for ducks and squirrels? I believe that ducks and squirrels... I believe that... Well, let me rephrase that. I believe all ducks should be counted in a line. And I believe squirrels should get their nuts in line. I believe that they need voting rights. Absolutely. They matter too. And they have fake oppose. Well, ducks don't have thumbs, but squirrels have thumbs, and they should vote. And the squirrels should help the ducks vote. Damn it! Um, Prince Jacob, sixteen ninety one. If you lived in rapture and spliced up yourself, what kind of splicer would you be? In case you don't know the types, thuggish, leadheads, nitro, spider, and Houdini splicers. I think the Houdini splicers would be pretty cool because, dude, like putting on a fucking like deer mask with antlers and scaring the shit out of people that would be something i would like to major in like i would like to do that for the rest of my life just be able to go poof i'm a fucking deer oh my god that'd be pretty cool melissa xoxo303 i got some questions one have you ever watched the original pokemon anime did you like it i used to watch some of it when i was a kid like like, when I say kid, I want to say maybe I was, like, 12 or 13 years old. I used to watch it. Um, I never really watched it season to season, and I never really watched every single episode. It just happened to be a show that was on when I came home from school at, like, 4.30. And it was on, um, I think it was on Fox or something. And I would watch it when I was eating dinner. And I liked it. Um, I can't really recall a lot of the episodes or name a lot of the Pokemon, and I never played the Pokemon back then, but I liked it. Have you collected any of the cards and or played the card game? No. Uh, three, what is your favorite of all time Pokemon game? I have no idea. I only started playing Pokemon when uh, John got me Pokemon Black. And that was the first Pokemon game I ever played, so I can't really compare it to anybody else. Four, will you be getting Resident Evil Revelations for the Wii U? If so, a let's play. LOL. Um, I had been debating. I really do want to get it, but I don't know if I want to get it on the Wii U or the PlayStation 3. And the problem that I have is if I get it for the PlayStation 3, I can record, which is cool. And I could play with friends. But John's trying to encourage me to get more games for the Wii U because we don't have a lot of games for the Wii U. And the problem that I have with that is my HD PVR recorder can't hook up to the Wii U to record. So any games I buy for the Wii U right now until I get different connections, I won't be able to record them. So that's my dilemma right now. Five, do you think you would do a video showing what systems and games you have like a collection vid? Um... I will once I actually get all of them because a lot of them are still at my parents' house and I haven't officially fully moved everything down here yet. So maybe in the future when I actually get all my PlayStation 1 games and PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 games where I am now, then maybe I can do a video like that in the future. Um, Girl4433, when are you going to continue Resident Evil 2? I'm planning on doing it soon. Do not worry. Mew Aya 890. Cat, have you ever played this one PC game called The Path? Yes, I have. I tried playing it and I actually tried recording it. And for some reason, Fraps hates that game. Hates it. I don't know why. 
So I was gonna try to do a uh, let's play of it and it just would not let me. So I was kind of sad about that. But I haven't really finished the game. I only played like one part of it. Lion Boy 383 been watching your channel for a couple of years, but what video game character do you feel is most likely you? Like I said, Claire Redfield. Um, Traven Rivera, what is your favorite Let's Play you've done so far? I think I also answered this before, but uh, I'd have to say that, like the favorite ones I've done, like I, I have said this before, the favorite ones I've done happen to be like the ones that I know the best, like Clock Tower 3, Beyond Good and Evil, Resident Evil 2, blah blah blah. P2Z second, which is Phantom Thief Siku. Hey, how's it going, Jake? I'm bad of thinking of questions, but I have one. What song would be your battle theme? Hmm. Well, this is assuming that um, I was actually good at battle games, and I could be a kick-ass player. I think I would like to have um, Night of Fire as my battle theme. Um, oh god, I forget the name of the fucking band! It's like, Night of Fire! I, I did, um, I did a, a fucking intro video for that a long time ago, but I think that would be it. I wish I could remember right now, but I'm just fucking brain farting everywhere. All Things Crafts 103. Will you please, please, please play Amnesia? I might consider it. I am not making any promises because I do have a computer that can run it now. The only downside is I have to find a better way to record it, but I'll see what I can do. Like I said, no promises. John Holman, what is, what in your opinion is the best console you ever played on? Hope you are okay too, Kat. Um, the best console I have ever, ever, ever played on? Oh, it's hard to say. It's one of those things that like, when you have a new console, you're like, wow, this is the best ever. And then you get the newest one, you're like, wow, this is the best ever. I'm content with the PlayStation 3. I mean, I really am. And I know that there's a PlayStation 4 coming out and newer systems, but I'm, right now I'm content with the PlayStation 3. I can't say it's the best one I've ever played on, but it's one that, like, I've grown accustomed to. I would have to say in my past, just for, like, the amount of games that I have, for it that I love playing on. I do like the PlayStation 2 still. I would have to say currently, I, I, I don't want to elaborately say it's the best one I've ever played on, but yeah. I would, I would, have, I would have to say PlayStation 2. Girl4433, and will you play The Walking Dead Season 2 when it comes out? Fuck yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah, are you kidding me? I want to know what happens to Clementine. No doubt about it. Bayonetta Jean. Are you play PlayStation 3? If you have it, I have a special game for you. It is Bayonetta. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do play the PlayStation 3. And, um... I, may, I might play Bayonetta again. I don't know if I will. It's a wait and see. And the question is, I love Fatal Frame very much, and I see there's a Fatal Frame 2 Wii remake. Are you going to play it? Well, uh, I don't know. Like, I love the Fatal Frame games, but I feel like Fatal Frame 2 is going to be the same exact thing as Fatal Frame 2 remake. It's just going to look better. So I don't know if I just want to replay the whole thing just to show you the better graphics because it's going to be the same story, the same enemies and everything. So, I mean, I might play it on my own if I get it, but I don't know if I'll record it. That is a, um, a wait and see kind of thing. Uh, K.E. Flix. Do you like bacon or sausage better? Actually, neither. I don't really like either of them. Um, bacon I can't stand. I can only tolerate bacon bits. And sausage I can only eat if it's on pizza. I know, I'm a weirdo. Um. Daisha Knox. Who is your favorite Resident Evil character? Claire Redfield. Nexels again. 
Look around the room right now. Is there anything you could use if a zombie walked into your room in 10 seconds? What would you use? Well, the closest thing that I have to me that I could pick up and throw at someone happens to be an iron. So I might use the iron because everything else I have is crap. Yeah, definitely an iron. <laughs> Zat... Zatxana? Z-A-T-X-N-N-A. What's your favorite genre of music and what got you into that genre? Um, I prefer rock music because it's more, I don't even know, rocky. No, it's got a better beat that I can deal with. I don't like country. Country's like, yeah, I hate my boyfriend, I hate my girlfriend, derp -a derp -a derp kind of thing. And I don't like that kind of music. I think it's stupid. But like, um, the kind of music I like as far as rock music, I like all kinds from, uh, sometimes I like heavy metal, some heavy metal. I like Ozzy Osbourne, I like Whitesnake, I like a lot of the 80s stuff. Um, I also like Disturbed. Um, John just recently got me hooked into listening to Coheed and Cambria. And I do like Nickelback and Three Doors Down, even though if John heard me say that, he'd probably strangle me because he hates them, but whatever. Uh, and my favorite artist, I can't pick one. Like, like my favorite artist for years was Three Doors Down. And I don't want to say it's my favorite artist because I don't really listen to them anymore. Like... <laughs> I mean, I'm tolerable when it comes to certain music. If I hear something on the radio and I can sing along to it and I can listen to it and tolerate it, I'll go with it. But other than that, like, if it's Adele for the 560th time, I just want her to set fire to herself sometimes. Because listening to the song over and over again on the radio is annoying. Um... Angels for Life, 123489. Congratulations, GamerCat09, on your subscribers. My question is, who is your most favorite Let's Player? Like I said, I adore watching Chaotic Monkey cry. And uh, I think he's funny and everything. So, 70 comments later, and how long did we record this for? Over an hour? I have finally answered everybody's questions. How the fucking Luya? Well, I appreciate everybody that participated, and if you happened to um made a comment for a question for me to answer, and I answered it, I will leave your name at the end of the video. Um. So until then, you're just gonna have to stay tuned to the channel and see all the stuff that comes around, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this question and answers video and thank you all each and every single one of you for helping me hit 5,000 subscribers you are all awesome you all deserve a cookie a big fat juicy chocolate chip cookie with a big glass of milk for all of you all right guys I shall see you all again until then take care and bye bye